let me welcome and introduce uh, Professor Arnold Supan. He is a pillar of our history program here at the Diplomatic Academy. You're, you're one of the longest serving uh, of our faculty, faculty members. He's Emeritus Professor at the University of Vienna. He's a member of the Academy of, of Sciences here. And he has two new books which are hot off the press. One quite literally is hot off the press, which I will hold up. First one, Imperialist Peace Order, which is now available for purchase. And also uh, the English translation of his book, Hitler Benish Tito, National Conflicts, World Wars, Genocides, Expulsions, and Divided Remembrance in East Central and Southeastern uh, Europe. So Professor Supan, uh, welcome, and we look forward to uh, hearing what you have to say. The peace treaties of Saint-Germain and Trianon sealed the disintegration of the Habsburg monarchy into seven successive states under international law. Austria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Romania, Yugoslavia, then the Kingdom of uh, Serbs, uh, Croatia, and Slovenes, and Italy. In the transition years from the dissolved Habsburg monarchy uh, to the majority Republican uh, successor states were usually difficult, sometimes chaotic. However, there were experienced politi uh, politicians uh, in most of the new states who had already learned their trade in the parliaments of the defunct empire. At the beginning, the legal, administrative, economic, and social orders of Austria-Hungary had been adopted. But the political constitutions had now been reversed, as well as the politically guiding ideas. <clears throat> the repercussions of the total war experience, the impoverishment processes, the lack of food and coal, the Spanish flu, as well as radical nationalism, including anti-Semitism, were felt intensely in the following years. The legal measures of the new governments also set in motion hundreds of thousands of people between the successor states of the Habsburg monarchy, especially previous Austrian and Hungarian civil servants. These devastating situations triggered millions of people's fears about the present and uh, pessimism about the future. In point 10 of his uh, 14 points to the Congress, US President Woodrow Wilson had addressed, quotation, the peoples of Austria-Hungary whose place among the nations we wish to safeguard and assure should be accorded the freest opportunity of autonomous development. End of quotation. Wilson also called for the removal of all economic barriers, the reduction of national armaments, and uh, the alignment of borders after historically established lines of allegiance and nationality. For all nationalities of Austria-Hungary, nation-building meant the connection between ethnicity, territory, and sovereignty. The political representatives of all nationalities wanted on their territory to establish their own independent nation-state. The nation-state was supposed to guarantee not only political, economic, social, and cultural independence, but also physical security. Due to the ethnically mixed settlement structures in the Habsburg monarchy, however, this implication of the national right of self-determination led to multiple demarcation conflicts between the nations, particularly between the German Austrians and Czechs and Slovenes, the Hungarians and Slovaks or Romanians or Serbs, the Czechs and Poles, the Poles and the Ukrainians, and the Italians and uh, Slovenes or Croats. On 25 December 1918, the Austrian State Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Otto Bauer, had sent a comprehensive memorandum on the international, political, and economic position of German Austria to all the powers and governments of the Entente States and the United States which expressed the standpoints of German Austria on its international legal recognition 
the inclusion of German Bohemia, the Sudetenland, South Bohemia, and South Moravia, the normalization of relations between German Austria and Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and Italy, the question of the Danube Federation, the Anschluss question, the critical economic situation, and national border disputes. For German Austria, Bauer demanded a national territory of more than 107,000 square kilometers, with more than 10 million inhabitants, agreed with privacy under military control, and provided the Anschluss of uh, uh, Danube Federation as a possible alter alternative. Between 27 February and uh, 2nd March 1919, German Austrian Anschluss negotiations took place in Berlin. The most difficult point on both sides was the question of currency and the relationship between the Austrian Hungarian Bank and the Reichsbank. Finally, it was stated that German Austria, as an independent member state, should enter the German Reich, adopt the German custom system, and enter uh, into a monetary union with the Reich. Vienna would have become the second capital of the Reich. However, Prime Minister Clemenceau, also the president of the Peace Conference, was asked on 27 March 1919 in the Council of Four what the Allies should say to the Austrians who wanted the Anschluss. And uh, Clemenceau clarified the French position, quotation. We ask only that you remain independent. Do with this independence what you will. But you should not join a German bloc and take part in a revenge plan. End of quotation. Therefore, on 2nd May 1919, Clemenceau, Wilson, and Lloyd George approved Article 80 of the Treaty with Germany. Germany recognizes and strictly respects the independence of Austria within the frontiers that shall be fixed by the treaty. And Germany recognizes that this independence is in a line ever except with the consent of the Council of the League of Nations. Before the Austrian delegation left to Paris in the mid May 1919, the Council of Four had settled the questions of the Bohemian lands, Lower Styria, Southern Carinthia, and South Bureau. The Czechoslovak Foreign Minister, Edward Benesch, and uh, the Czechoslovak Prime Minister, Karl Kramers, presented Czechoslovakia's case uh, to the Council of Ten uh, already on uh, 5 February 1919. At first, Benesch claimed Bohemia, Moravia, Austrian Silesia, Slovakia, and Lusatia for ethnographic reasons. He spoke of old historical causes that armed the Czech people against the Germanic masses, and that the Czechs had always felt that they had a spe special mission to resist the Platonic flood. While he reduced the number of Germans in Bohemia, he enlarged uh, the number of uh, the Czechs. The best argument for Banish to claim all of Bohemia, all of the Bohemian lands, was the fact that the Czech-German parts of Bohemia contained nearly the whole of the industries in the country. When Lloyd George inquired what the reasons might be which had led to the concentration of industries at the edges of the country, Benesch replied that the presence of water power, coal, and minerals explained it. Describing the ethnic composition of the population engaged in these industries, Benesch made a false assertion that the majority was Czech, only the employees were chiefly German. When Lloyd George asked whether the area in question had been represented in the Austrian Reichstag by German deputies, Benesch had to agree. Now Lloyd George inquired whether the inhabitants of this dis district, if offered to choice, would uh, vote for exclusion from the Czechoslovak state or for inclusion. Benesch replied that they would vote for exclusion chiefly through the influence of the Social Democratic Party, which saw that the, German, uh, the Germans would henceforth have a social democratic regime, meaning the Weimar Republic. 
When the Council of uh, Four discussed the report of the Commission on Czechoslovak affairs, this would be in German matter was quickly and almost casually settled. The French head of the Commission insisted the inhabitants of these regions were accustomed to live in close connection with the rest of Bohemia and did not desire separation. The Council accepted Clemenceau's suggestion to opt for the simple solution of following the pre-war border between Germany and Bohemia and include more than three million Germans in the new Czechoslovakia. Astonishingly, Colonel House, who was the agent for the ailing American president, raised no objections and agreed that he would accept the old line of the historical borders and would not delineate a new one. Also on 6 January 1919, Prince uh, Regent Alexander once again emphasized that the Yugoslav peace delegation should demand only the ethnographic borders of our people. On 8 February 1990, the Yugoslav delegation, under the leadership of Prime Minister Nikola Pašić, you, uh, you saw him on the uh, uh, picture, um, with the beard, uh, white beard. Uh, pre um, Nikola Pašić presented the whole series of wider territorial demands before the Council of Ten that affected the majority of German, Austrian cities, Villach, Klagenfurt, and Marburg the majority of Madia cities like Peach and Sobotka and Arad, the majority of the German city Temeswar, and uh, the Albanian city Skutari, and the majority of the Italian cities of Fiume, Pola, Trieste, and Gertz. Yugoslav delegates and experts pointed to the Italianization in the littoral, the Germanization in Carinthia and Lower Asturia, and the marginalization in southern Hungary and tried to represent the ports of Trieste and Fiume as indispensable for the Slovenian and Croatian economy. Because the Vienna Parliament, in accordance with the provincial assemblies in Graz and Frankfurt, also demanded the inclusion of, of the Drava Valley in Lower Styria and of the Karabankan border in Carinthia, no fewer than 11 Styrian and 13 Carinthian uh, judicial districts with a total of 470,000 inhabitants, uh, among uh, them uh, a small majority of Slovenes, were disputed regarding future state affiliation. When it came to uh, the South Slavic occupation of uh, Southeastern uh, Carinthia at the beginning of December 1918, the provincial Carinthian State Assembly and mostly decided not to oppose Entente troops. This was forbidden by the cease uh, fire uh, from uh, uh, Padua. Not to oppose Entente troops, but to oppose the entry of Yugoslav troops outside the Entente troops. This defensive struggle by those who were the directly affected was ultimately decisive for the future border demarcation since knowledge of these events also reached the U.S. Study Commission of Professor Archibald Coolidge from the Harvard University in Vienna. During Armistice talks in, in Graz, two U.S. officers, um, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sherman Miles and Lieutenant Leroy King, joined the negotiations and proposed mediation. Between 28 uh, January and 6 February 1919, the so-called Miles Mission toured a number of small towns, markets, and villages in ethnically mixed lower Carinthia and spoke to secular and spiritual dignitaries, peasants and workers, market goers, and school children. As early as uh, 7 February, the mission submitted the first report to Coolidge, stating their majority report that the entire Klagenfurt Basin is a geographical and economic entity and should be assigned to Austria because the majority of the population, even those of Slovene nationality, would like it. Well, I stated there are many Slovenes uh, who do, uh, do not wish to join Yugoslavia. We strongly recommend that the final frontier between Austria and Yugoslavia and the province of Carinthia be drawn along the watershed of the Karavank Mountains. Kulic, accepted uh, this uh, report and sent Miles to Paris to give a personal report 
to uh, President Wilson and the U.S. delegation. The Commission of uh, Romanian and Yugoslav Affairs discussed uh, this uh, demarcation uh, question between uh, Yugoslav and Austria in March and April in 1919. Uh, the Americans, uh, Charles Seymour and uh, Clive Day, however, pleaded unevocably for the preservation of the Klangwood Basin in Austria, both for economic reasons and as a result of the military assistance of the German and Slovene-speaking Lower Corinthians, which can be interpreted like a referendum. On 12 May, 1919, Ambassador Tadieu, the later foreign minister, French foreign minister, explained the principle of the plebiscite uh, to the Council of Ten, and then, on the same day, Clemenceau, Wilson, and Lloyd George agreed to the plebiscite. Um, perhaps you know that the plebiscite uh, uh, was held on uh, October the 10th, 1920, and 59% uh, of the uh, mixed population voted to remain in Austria. Because the Entente had promised Italy for entering the war against Austria-Hungary uh, in April uh, 1915, the future border at the Brenner Pass, the Rome government demanded not only the Italian part of South Tyrol, but also the district of Ampezzo, uh, populated by Ladinians, and the whole of the German parts of South Tyrol. The um, Italian delegates submitted a memorandum to the Council of Ten in which the incorporation of Tyrol was required up to the Brenner, and in addition, the Sesto Valley, the Canal Valley, and the region of Tarvisio. The memorandum spoke of the liberation of his oppressed brothers in Trentino, Alto Adige, and Venezia Giulia, a geographic and political unity of Trentino and Alto Adige, uh, in which an alleged 420,000 Italians and only 180,000 Germans lived and uh, introduced the need for a, a strategic Brenner border. Strategic to whom, we should ask, of course, not to North Europe, but to Germany. The U.S. inquiry had originally been against the Brenner border, but in October 1980, Colonel House could imagine the Brenner border in connection with autonomy for South Europe and the liberation of young German men from military service. Wilson, however, who for some reason had a preference for the solution of the Adriatic problem in favor of Yugoslavia, was obviously prepared to accept the Italian position in the uh, Tyrol question uh, since the end of January 1919. In the Council of Ten, Prime Minister Vittorio Orlando talked dramatically about Austria being Italy's main enemy during the war. His deputies at Paris kept hold of the London Treaty from 1915 and argued using strategic reasons and that the Poles, Czechs, Romanians, and Yugoslavs were also breaking the principle of nationality. Very interesting argument. Other notes by the Austrian government and the Rolian Diet to the Council of Ten followed, offering a military neutrality of German Tyrol. But even the threat of a Tyrolian irredenter, the Anschluss of North Tyrol to Germany, did not help. On 14 May 1919, the German Austrian delegation under the leadership of State Chancellor Karl Renner arrived at Saint Germain en Laye, the suburb of Paris. On 29 May, uh, Renner was told the Allied and Associated Powers have decided to recognize the new republic under the name Republic of Austria, not German Austria. The first draft uh, of the peace treaty, handed over by Clemenceau on 2 June, did not include all clauses. Arena was given the opportunity to present, uh, the, present the views of the German Austrians and thus also of the Sudeten Germans, South Tyrolians, Koreans, and Asturians. Nevertheless, getting the first draft of this day, the Austrian delegation felt very sad, bitter, and depressed when we realized that Austria had received harsher terms than Germany. Arena said this. The German district in the Bohemian lands were allotted to Czechoslovakia, South Tyrol to Italy, and Lower Styria with Maribor to Yugoslavia. 
reparations and other financial clauses were copied from the conditions imposed on Germany. But added to this condition was the confiscation of all property held by Austrians in the territories of the former monarchy. Therefore, the note of the section had Richard Schüller, Austria cannot live, was the first to be transmitted to the Supreme Council, protesting with great energy against the confiscation of property belonging to Austrian citizens in the territories of former Austria-Hungary. Indeed, the article was replaced by the interdiction of such confiscation. However, Article 88 of the treaty expressly stated the independence of Austria is in the line and forbade the joining of the two German states, also the joining of Austria with Hungary or with any other state, unless the consent of the Council of the League of Nations was given. On 20 July 1919, the final text of these conditions comprising 381 articles was delivered to Renner, referring the wall of uh, prejudices and incorrect judgments uh, that were directed against the German Austrian uh, people. Ebert Bauer, State Secretary, resigned as uh, uh, State Secretary on 27 July, quoting Bauer. I cannot hope to find confidence among the French rulers who, as Marx counted, still consider the disunity of the German people a right of the French nation." End of quotation. An explanation for the harsh conditions of the Saint-Germain Treaty was given by Clemenceau in his cover letter delivered to Renner on 2 September 1919. I quote, the Austrian people share in a large number with their neighbor, the Hungarian people, people, not nation, responsibility for the ill which Europe has suffered in the course of the last five years. It is now evident that this ultimatum on Serbia was but a hypocritical pretext to begin a war with the old autocratic government in Vienna in close accord with the rulers of Germany had prepared long ago and for which the judge, the moment had arrived. The presence of Austrian cannons at the siege of Liège and Namur is a proof more, if one were needed, of the close association of the government of Vienna with the government of Berlin in the complot against public law and the liberty of Europe. End of quotation. And so forth. Those uh, two pages, this uh, cover letter. Clemenceau's mental note, this cover letter, oozing with more than dubious double morality, suppresses the fact that Austria-Hungary did not declare war on France, Great Britain, Japan, Italy, or the United States, but that all five allies had declared war on the Habsburg monarchy. Of course, all the deputies of the Austrian National Assembly considered this cover letter to be an intense humiliation. And of course, uh, the Austrian politicians and the Austrian public did not forget this humiliation, perhaps at least until March 1938. However, on 6 September, the Social Democratic and Christian Social Deputies voted under protest for the treaty and instructed Renner to sign the peace treaty uh, then on uh, 10 September 1919 in the castle of Saint Germain en Laye. The mood in Paris was anything but Hungary friendly. Many politicians, diplomats, and journalists saw Hungary as a land of aristocratic landowners who were still oppressing their peasants. This negative sentiment was also transmitted to the Commission on Romanian and Yugoslav affairs, particularly to the French and Italian experts, while the British and the American were looking more for the ethnic frontiers. However, on uh, at 20 March 1919, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Ferdinand Wicks actually handed a note from the Supreme Council to President Karui that the Hungarian troops were to pull back within 10 days to an area west of the neutral zone in the Tisza area, so in eastern Hungary. President Karui lost his nerves, quotation, make it, make Hungary a French colony, 
or a Romanian colony or a Czechoslovak colony. On the next day, Karel left his power to a government of social democrats and communists, which pro proclaimed the dictatorship of the proletariat under the leadership of a revolutionary governing council led by the communist Bela Kuhn. Despite the military successes of the Hungarian Red Army, led by former KUK Army and Hundred officers, the Council of Four accepted the demarcation proposal submitted by the Commission. At the beginning of June, the Hungarian Red Army even occupied a large part of eastern Slovakia uh, with Kosha, Kosice, and Eperjev, Preshov, and proclaimed a Slovak Soviet Republic. Nevertheless, on 3rd in June 1990, the Allies presented Hungary's new borders. In the, uh, and these borders uh, were uh, fixed then in the peace treaty. A few days after the Hungarian delegation had arrived in Paris on 6 January 1920, so six months later, Count Oponi received a draft from the Allied power, powers. Hungary should not only lose all of Upper Hungary, the entirety of Transylvania and Hungary east of Oradea, as well as greater part of southern Hungary, but also area with uh, predominantly Mardia population. In reply, the Hungarian notes marshaled numerous counter-arguments to these frontier proposals, linguistic and ethnic, historical, cultural, religious, economic, and hydrographic. Oponi, who delivered his speech in French, English, and Italian, stressed that Hungary was more harshly punished than the other defeated nations. It lost two-thirds of its territory and population. Three and a half million mothers would now uh, be living outside the Hungarian borders. Therefore, Oponi uh, proposed that the disputed area should be allocated in accordance with the wishes of their peoples, under the principle of national self-determination advocated by President Wilson. France, however, reproached Hungary for having supported Prussian policy since 1867 and later the German imperialism. On 6 May 1920, the Conference of Ambassadors sent the final peace terms to the Hungarian delegation, set a deadline. The new president of the peace conference, the French Prime Minister, Alexandre Milleron, tried to explain the Hungarian government the territorial clauses of the treaty. Quotation. The nationality situation in Central Europe is such that it is not possible to make political frontiers fully agree with ethnic frontiers. He didn't know this man, of course. Uh, the, demand, uh, the demand of the nations was expressed in the two months of October and November 1918 when the dual monarchy disintegrated and the long oppressed nations united with the Italian, Romanian, Yugoslav, and Czechoslovak brothers. The signing ceremony occurred on uh, uh, June the 4th, 1920, in the Grand Trianon Palais at Versailles. The treaty was uh, perceived by Hungarian society as a, a blatant injustice, and on the day the treaty was signed, hundreds of thousands protested on the streets in Budapest with the slogan, Nem Nem Shoha. No, no, never. Revision became the alpha and omega of all parties in the Hungarian political spectrum for a quarter of a century or even more. So I'm coming to the end. A reassessment after 100 years. First, the Allied, power, the Allied powers treated the new Republic of Austria and the new Kingdom of Hungary as the sole heirs of the Habsburg monarchy and having been guilty of causing World War I, together with Germany, of course. Neither Austria nor Hungary could abandon their in independence without the consent of the Council of the League of Nations. Second, from the former Habsburg monarchy, uh, Austria earned only 13% um, looking to the square uh, kilometers and 40% uh, from the population, and Hungary 40% of the square uh, kilometers and 15% of the uh, uh, population. So the new Czechoslovakia, uh, the, the new uh, kingdom of Serbs, Croats, Slovenes, 
the, the new Romania burnt more um, square kilometers and sometimes more inhabitants. Of uh, 10 million German Austrians, only 6.1 million belong to the new republic. Uh, then plus a quarter million of Hungarian Germans. Of the 10 million Madias, only 6.8 million remained in Trianu Hungary. On the other hand, approximately a third of the population of Czechoslovakia, Poland and Romania consisted of national minorities, particularly Germans, Madias, Ukrainians and Jews. In freeing the old nationalities, the peace treaties created millions of new national minorities. Third, Austria had to pay two-thirds of the Austrian war loans and more than one-third of the war debts. To guarantee the reparations, the Reparation Commission got the right to sequester all Austrian, respectively Hungarian properties and all their sources of income, customs, for example. And this uh, lasted until January 1930, until the, the conference in the, in the Hague. Over and beyond that, the nostrification clause allowed the victors to acquire capital shares of central uh, power nationals in enterprises within their borders, either as reparations or uh, with just compensation. The peace treaties did not respect uh, the economic consequences of the dissolution of the Habsburg monarchy, as John Maynard Keynes pointed out. The common railway network was interrupted. New customs and currency hindered the uh, trade. Uh, the new nation states introduced uh, protectionist measures uh, to gain autarky. So after 1918, something like a permanent state of customs war developed among the successor states. Fourth. Since the French and partly the British government wanted to create an eastern barrier, a cordon sanitaire, in East Central Europe as a counterweight to Germany and Soviet Russia, the Allies uh, tacitly tolerated the inclusion of borderlands with clearly visible German uh, majorities into Poland, Czechoslovakia, Romania, and Yugoslavia. Clemenceau so told the Council of Four, our firmest guarantee against German aggression is that behind Germany is an excellent strategic position, stand Czechoslovakia and Poland. However, even Clemenceau had some doubts. Quotation. Yes, this treaty will bring us burdens, troubles, miseries, difficulties. That will uh, continue for long years. I cannot say for how many years. Perhaps it should, I should say for how many centuries. The crisis which has begun will continue. And fifth, the Paris uh, peace treaties of Saint-Germain and Trianon were made against the losers and not with them. However, many problems were left unsolved. The Anschluss question, the problem of borderland minorities in Poland, Slovakia, Romania, Yugoslavia, and Italy, the question of Hungary's new borders, the South Tyrolean question, the problem of Italian-Yugoslav border, and the Ukrainian question. After the peace treaties, Europe remained divided along many fault lines between victors and losers, defenders of the treaties and the revisionists, militarism and pacifism, capitalism and communism, right and left. On the substance of the peace treaties of Saint Germain, Trianon, and Neuilly with Bulgaria, the British historian Sarah Steiner passed a very clear judgment. My last quotation. The treaties with Austria, Hungary, and Bulgaria were far harsher and more vindictive than the one with Germany. The Austrian Hungarian settlements were punitive in the extreme. End of quotation, end of my presentation.